Welcome to another season of Hudson Raider football on the River Channel. I'm Chris Larson. We'll be joined in just a moment by Joel Eby, but the Raiders are about to kick off their 2011 season against Wisconsin Rapids. It's the same team they faced the last few years to open their season. Uh, the Raiders won two years ago. Last year, they fell to the Wisconsin Rapids Raiders 35-7 in Rapids. So back at home tonight, Sam Somervold ready to kick it off for the Raiders and the 2011 season is about to begin. The kick is off, it's a high one. Fielded at about the 18 yard line by Rapids. Takes it around the corner to the outside all the way up to about the 38 yard line. And that was Vince Beagle with the return for the Wisconsin Rapids Raiders. We'll try to help you out with that tonight. We've got two teams on the field uh, being called the Raiders. So we're going to call, try to call Rapids Rapids and we'll call Hudson, either Hudson or the Raiders. So it looks like Rapids will start their first possession on the 34 yard line. You know, Chris, Hudson's returning a lot of uh, experienced players this year and a lot of them are on defense. The defensive line was Strakota, Botsett, and Berkey. All of them. And there they are. There you go. Cord Halber on the keeper, Sixes. brought down by a whole host of Raiders. John Botsett gets the credit for the tackle on that one, and it's a loss of about a yard and a half. We'll set up second down in a long 11 for the Rapids. It's a little bit of a different wrinkle this year. They're trying to run more of a 3-5 type or a 3-4 type defense. Man in motion to the right, and Botsett will keep Come on! And the Raiders have it! They're the Raiders got the ball. They blew that up again. You know, the conversations I've had with some of the coaches and some of the players and parents is Hudson's going to rely on their defense a lot this year. That's real similar to two years ago when they had that real staunch defense that gave up hardly any points. Steven Berkey making the stop and knocking that ball out of there. Campbell with the recovery. And the Raiders' offense will start with incredible field position at the Rapids 32 yard line. Yeah, the offense can't complain about this. Luke Miller in there at quarterback. Very rarely that Hudson's had a two year returning quarterback and we got Luke Miller this year. He drops back to pass. And they go for Wide it open. The first play. Touchdown. Touchdown Raiders. Wow. Tyler Smirts not getting him in on offense. All alone behind the def defense. Then that's Hudson's big play offense. We were told we were going to see more and more of that this year, and I guess there's a perfect example. Out of the gate, the Raider defense dominates, sets up the offense, and in one play, the Raiders put it on the board. It's six to nothing. Outstanding play by the Raiders. Great blocking. Luke Miller put the ball right where it had to be. Smirch now wide open behind the Raiders deep behind the Rapids Raiders defense. Somerville's kick is up and good. 7-0 Raiders. 11, or just less than one minute into the game. Well, if the rest of the season goes like that, Chris, we're going to be some happy campers. <laughs> Last year, this uh, Raider team had a tough road trip in that opening game against Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, this team a lot different. You've got a lot more experience on this football team compared to the team that came into that game last year. Yeah, you know, Hudson does have a lot of experience returning. One of the positions that they are a little lacking on experience is the offensive line. This is, I believe, the third year in the row where Hudson only has one returning offensive lineman. But the defensive line, very stalwart, a lot of experience playing time last year. The skill positions on offense, quarterback, running back, all returning with a lot of experience. And some of those guys took their licks last year. It, oh. it kind of was, there was some times where it was tough to watch, but... Uh, Really had a, had a pretty solid season last year, and all those guys got a lot of experience, and we're hoping it pays off this season. Well, you know, a lot of these kids that, you know, they grew up watching Hudson play Rapids with, uh, you know, the later years where, you know, Hudson pretty much had uh, Rapids number. And last year they got taken to the woodshed by them and got beat pretty solidly. I, I think that's fresh in their mind. You know, all these kids are on last year's team. That was not a fun road trip. So Somerville to kick off. Hudson leading 7-0 early on in this one. 
Once again, a high kick that'll be fielded on the outside of the 20-yard line. And Rapids will once again have some pretty good field position starting at the 42-yard line. Alex Marriott with the return. And that's the second straight time Rapids has returned the ball to the linebackers. So kind of been some short kicks by the Raiders so far in this game. Well, and that's one thing with these, you know, these quality teams, a lot of them do play their best players at, at more than one position. This time Rapids will hand off on the left side. And wrapped up and taken down Tyler Schmerson and company on that one. Josh Schuler also in there on the tackle, and Zach Campbell. Second nine for Rapids now. They'll pitch it to the motion man around the right side. He's got a little room just on the other side of the 45. Pick up about four yards. Hudson tr hopes to capitalize on their athleticism and their blindbackers this year, pursuing from sideline to sideline. Those big horses in front with. He's got no. Matt Stracota, Berkey, and uh, Alex Burgess up front. And that's going to make some room for those linebackers to do what they do. Third down and seven here for Rapids. And they'll run it around the left side again and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. That's Sam Rizika. So far, so good for the Raider defense tonight. You know, Chris, I was trying to look out there and find out where Josh Schuler is, but I see him, he's uh, not suited up. He's on the sideline. He's wearing number 45. I thought maybe we had a number wrong, but Derek Campbell filling in admirably for him. And the punt's away, Ooh, it's a bad short one. punt. That's not even getting him 20 yards. And the Raiders That's a, will take over on their own 47-yard line. Call it the 41, I guess. Yeah, that punt netted them about 10 yards. And that was a, a nice spot for him, too. That was a generous spot. Well, so what's his defense doing it, getting the job done early here, Chris? See if the offense can capitalize like they did last time. Miller in the pistol. And they'll hand it off up the middle this time. Pickup of about two yes. yards. Frank Schneider, name we didn't hear last year at all. He is a senior. So he Frank Schneider is senior. Yeah, you're right. We didn't didn't call his name last year, Joel. I, I do see Hudson has 89 in there. Alex Herring, one of the two only two sophomores to suit up for the Raiders this year. They'll hand it off again. This time goes to Tucker Malika, and Malika picks up four or five yards on second down. It'll set up a third down and short for the Raiders. Hudson's offensive line this year, Chris, is a little bit undersized compared to what we've seen in the past. You know, Hudson specializes in those big offensive linemen, and uh, this year's crew is a little bit smaller. And the Raiders should earn that one for free. With Rapids, looked like they jumped. Yep, Let's see if is. they were drawn. No, nope, it'll go against Wisconsin Rapids. So that'll be a first down and 10 for Hudson. Hudson used that so effectively in the past, that hard count. It looked like Luke Miller is settling right into that pattern. You put that guy in motion, that's just one more thing to trigger the jump. Malika will go in motion. They'll fake the handoff. Oh, they do give it to him. He goes around. He's got space. First down and more. Down near the 30-yard line. And, you know, Chris, there's that quickness we saw flashes of last year. And if they can get Malika on the outside, he's going to get some yards. Hudson's never been a team that's given one back all the carries. 
But uh, I think Malik has got a chance this year to be a, be a featured back for Hudson. He's a speed guy, and he's put on some pounds in the offseason. So look for him to carry the ball quite a bit this season. This time Joe Kelly comes in, and they'll give it to Kelly. And he's inside tackle, going to pick up about two or three on the run. Will be second down and seven coming up. Looks like they have Frank Snyder in a tailback. That spot was held down last year by Lockney. That is the correct pronunciation of his name. I didn't get that clarified in the offseason. I think Lockney is sitting this one out. And they will go mm. to Frank Snyder, and Snyder picks up maybe a yard or two, and that's going to bring up third down and about six coming up for Hudson. Well, in comes Mike Holmes. Mike Holmes, who we saw a lot of last year. They played him at quarterback. They played him at running back. They played, even played him at wide receiver. So we may have some trickery coming up on this play, Chris. Got him lined up in the slot. They, Hudson's still running that pistol offense. Let's see what they do with it. And they will give it to Holmes. Holmes throwing downfield. Oh! That was a trickeration, but uh, just a little overthrown there. And he was looking for your guy, the sophomore, Alex Herrick. Boy, I don't care how tall he is. That wasn't going to catch that one. That was just, just a plain overthrown. Maybe a little bit of first game jitters out of Mike Holmes there, but who's been a great athlete for the Raiders. And it's nice to have another guy like that, another weapon that uh, kind of leaves the defense in a place where they don't know what's going to happen. So they'll bring up fourth down, and where the Raiders are here on the field, they might as well go for it, and they will on the 28-yard line of Rapids. They'll send a man in motion. Miller looking to throw down the field, and he'll take it himself. He's going to be... Uh, ooh, it's going to depend on the spot. It's going to be close. Did not get a good spot. I don't think he got it. I think he's going to be just a foot nose of the football short. Yeah, where they have it, there's going to probably need a measurement here. Boy. I think they're going to be just a bit short, Chris. From our angle, though, it's hard to tell. It's going to be pretty close. Looks like it's going to be short. So Rapids will take over at their own 22. So far in two drives, they have a net of zero yards against this Raider defense. Well, you know, and like we talked about that earlier, you know, it's, it's going to be the defense that's going to, it's going to carry this team this year. You don't have to score many points if you don't let the other team score. As profound as that may sound. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Will the team who scores the most points win the game? I've heard that's often the case. All right. So Rapids on their third possession of the evening. They will look to pass. Throws it deep down the field. And that's going to be incomplete. Oh! But the flag flies. A late flag comes in. Boy, Lawrence Pruitt out there on his own. and I don't know about that. It looked like he was playing the ball to me. The two players certainly were tied up, and it just kind of came down to a judgment call at that point. If he's going to make that call, you'd like to see him throw it right away rather than wait until the after the play is over for five, ten seconds, then throw the flag. But as not... Not, not like the pros, it's not a spot foul, but it does give them a first down. But so the first, that's first, their first down, down of the down. night yep. for Rapids. And they're set at their own 37. And they will look to throw once again. And this time incomplete. Coverage down there by Tanner Owens. You know what, I didn't see any more contact on that play before that, there was on that play. It all comes down to the angle of the official. 
Tanner Owens was a returning starter from last year's team. Tanner Owens, Lawrence Pruitt, Tyler Smirchen are the three returning defensive backs. This time they'll run it up the middle and pick up maybe three or four yards on second down. That'll set up third down and six for Wisconsin Rapids at their own 41 yard line. Well, this kind of yards you like to have men, you know, that third and medium, third and long, where you know, running plays, there's not a lot of running plays that you're going to get six, seven yards against this Raider defense, I don't think. So, Court Halber under center facing another third down. Raiders defense looking to get off the field. And he'll try to keep it himself. He's going to be short by two or three yards. And we'll see what coach Tony Biolo does with a fourth down and two at their own 45. Haven't seen any mass substitutions yet. Uh, boy, you did. This would be a tough call here to go for it on fourth down in your own territory like this. Certainly. Last thing you want to do is give the ball back to the Raiders at inside the 45-yard line. Now we've got some movement coming in and out, out of that sideline. but Looks like they're oh, going they're for it. They're going to go for it. Albert under center. He'll hand it off up the middle. Oh, it looks like he might have got no. It's going to be really close. It's I think short. It's short. Well, the, the official on the far side has a mark. He's short. So the Raiders defense stands up again, and the Raiders will start their second drive of the night in Rapids territory. You know, Chris, I don't want to second guess a coach, but boy, that's a tough spot to go for on fourth and six, fourth and seven. Well, the way the Raiders have moved, the way. The uh, Rapids Raiders have moved the ball tonight. Maybe he thought this was their best opportunity. They, they've looked pretty uh, pretty rough on offense tonight. It looks like Hudson's offensive line. The one offensive returning offensive lineman from last year is number 56, Kellen Pearson. You also see number 58, Ben Shaw out there. Number 62, Vince Lindstrom. 74, Brian Gaffin. 75, Alex Hayes. And number 78, Austin Blank. So this time Miller under center. And they'll hand it off up the middle. And that's going to be a short pickup of maybe one or two by Frank Snyder. That's a different look than what we've seen out of the offense so far tonight. You know, I did see big Austin Blank in there. It's a senior, comes in at 6'4", 330 pounds, but it doesn't look like he's back out there now. So they'll go back to the pistol. And they're going to run the option. Malika taken out. Miller will take it himself. Pick up about four or five yards, and that's going to bring up third and four. That's one thing we need to see this year, Chris. We're going to need to see good decisions out of Miller. He's got a year under his belt. He knows the system. Him and Coach Cowles have had a whole offseason now again to work together. As long as he makes good decisions, the offense is going to do fine. He read that well. The linebacker just went right to Malika, didn't even pay attention to him. They well, that, put, it, put it down in the basket and took it himself. I think that comes from the scouting. If they scouted this team well, they knew that Tucker Malika was a speed guy, and they got to keep an eye on him. They'll fake it to Malika. Miller in trouble, though, and he's going to go down. Loss of a good 15 yards on that play. He turned around and had nowhere to go. Looked like Rapids sold out on the pass there. Yeah, Hudson's got to do a better job of, of blocking up front if they're going to make that play work. So the Raiders will punt for the first time tonight. At least they'll set up in punt formation anyway. Doesn't appear to be a place you'd typically fake, but you never know. Michael Loncard, a punt, and he oh. was in trouble. Got it out Boy. of there, though. Better job of selling it. He might have gotten an interference, but there. Yeah. Rapids blocked Tyler Schmerschen in the back. He went flying. So Rapids, the ball spotted at the 33, but that's going to go back quite a ways. Tyler Schmerschen had the, uh, the punt <laughs> returner in his sights and just – <laughs> was leveled from behind. That official threw that flag a long ways. 
he was clear over here on the sidelines, threw it all the way across the field. It was clearly a, a block in the back. Yeah, that was an easy call for the men in stripes. You know, just got to look at some of the numbers here, Chris. And, and unlike past years, it looks like the Raiders are starting three junior offensive linemen. One is Vince Lindstrom. It's like Brian, I, don't, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Caffin. And Alex Hay is all juniors. So those guys can perform this year. Next season, you're going to have a heck of an offensive line. But I believe uh, Coach Cowles and company are planning on a, a terrific season this year. They don't want to repeat a last yeah. season. They want to get back into the playoffs. They want to, they want to go deep into the playoffs. Come in with a, a fairly loaded roster, bringing back a lot of players. And Rapids will pitch it around to the left side and maybe a pickup of three or four for Duxbury. Lawrence Pruitt and Kelly team up for the tackle by Hudson on that play. Two forty-four left in the first quarter. Hudson leading this game seven to nothing. I think the Red Raiders bring a fairly, fairly uh, experienced team. They've had a lot of these kids have been playing for quite a while. And I know that, that play is going nowhere. Two years ago, they were loaded. They had a team that was basically all sophomores, and Hudson pretty much had their way with them. And those kids are definitely uh, showing their experience. So that core of the interior line for the Raiders with Alex Burgess stands up the Rapids ball carrier there, and it'll bring up a third down and six. And once again, there's Hudson, you know, changing kids out a lot on that defensive line, keeping kids fresh. It's a good way to get guys some experience in these early season games as well. Get Botts and Berkey starting. You get Burgess some time. And this time, oh, oh boy. Boy, it looked like they had him stopped at the line of scrimmage. and That's going to be close to a first down. They had Cord Halber wrapped up, and then he just kind of spun around and got loose. That'll be a first down for Rapids. So a fresh set of downs here. And Halber is a 5'11 senior. 170 pounds, so he's not not exactly big for a quarterback. And last year he didn't play quarterback. He had Gaska and another guy, and this year Gaska comes in as a defensive back for Rapids. Halbert will pitch it around the left side. <laughs> Schmerschna reached in there to try to pull it out, and Campbell took him down. Hudson's Short do gain. Hudson is doing a nice job of protecting that corner on those wide plays. Albert looking to pass this time under pressure, but gets out of there and intercepted. Nice job. Lawrence Pruitt just stepped out in front of that one and took it away. We have first down for Hudson. Deep inside Rapids territory, Lawrence Pruitt, a ball hawk on that play. Lawrence Pruitt showing his experience, sniffing that ball out. Sets up the Raiders with a first and 10 just outside the 25 yard line of the Rapids, of Rapids Raiders. Well, with 46 seconds left to go in the quarter, it'd be nice to see if the Raiders could punch one in here and extend their lead a little bit, give them a little breathing room. So Miller will go under center this time, Malika to his right, Snyder behind him, and the give is to Snyder, and Snyder making a little something out of nothing. Picks up about four or five yards on that carry. <laughs> Making a little something on the other right. Look at he was going to be stopped for little or no gain and ends up gaining five. So you got to put some Crisco on your jersey. <laughs> That's what they need on first down. You need to have those second and five, second and sixes. It gives your offense so much more opportunity to do other things. So second and five 
at the Rapids 21. And Miller will look to pass this time. Under a little pressure, gets it out of there, and that's going to be intercepted. So they taketh and giveth back. You know, we talked about the decision making of Luke Miller, and once again, there might have been a situation where it might have been a better, better decision just to tuck the ball down and run with it rather than try to throw it up. Looked like a Raider had, did have a chance at the ball, but. Sometimes as a receiver, you need to get in there and swat that down as well. And that might have been one of, one of those situations, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, probably not the, not the uh, best decision to throw it into there. So they're at the Raider defense back on the field and the quarter about to end. Halber looking to throw, get it into the flats here and that's gonna be a gain of seven or eight. And that is gonna end the quarter, we'll switch sides. So at the end of the first quarter, it's Hudson seven, Wisconsin Rapids zero and Joel, it's been kind of impressive, but it does look like the first game of the year. A little uh, butterflies out there and maybe a little sloppiness out there as well from both teams. Yeah, you know, I've been really impressed with the Raiders' defense. I think they've, uh, you know, and again, you know, as far as penalties go, Raiders haven't had any penalties. You know, and that's, we talked about this in years past. That was one of the nemesis of the Raiders. They always had those those, those irritating, you know, those mental mistakes, the the offsides, the the holdings, the just the, the drive killers. and for a first game. I think it's been played pretty clean by both teams. That last pass that Rapids threw, that was kind of a dangerous pass there in the flat. There were a couple of defenders there. Fortunately, uh, Burns had his back to the ball. If he would have turned around, he might have had a chance to take that one back to the house. A little different look to the Raider field this year, Chris. Yeah, they painted it up in the uh, end zones there. They got the mighty H. Yeah, the, checker, end zones. the checkerboard pattern is gone, and they put the H's similar to the center of the field on both end zones. Looks sharp. This is one of the, I think, the sharpest fields in the Big Rivers, being that it's natural grass. I know the uh, bench warmers, the parents of the players, spend a lot of time out on this field on every Thursday night. The school gives them some help, buys some of the paint, but I know that the bench warmers do provide a lot of it. And it really looks sharp. Well, second and five now for Rapids, and they'll run it up the middle, and not much going there. Look like uh, Stephen Berkey on the tackle there for the Raiders. Well, let's get a tackle for a loss here, and we can get things back on the right track, force them to either go for it on fourth down and take a chance or to punt it and get the right hands, ball back in the hands of the offense. So third and two, Halber under center, Gaska wide to the right, and they'll pitch it over there, and Ooh. that is gonna be pretty close to the first down. I'm guessing they got it, but we'll see what we come up with here. No, they're flipping it over and saying it's fourth down. I think it was short of the 30. He had to get past the 30, and I don't think he did it. Well, once again, here's decision time. If they went for it last time, I gotta believe they're gonna go for it again, Chris. Well, they're pretty deep in their own territory this time. That was at the 50. They don't get it here, but of course you've got a much shorter distance to go. And they only need about a half a yard. And it does look like they're going for it. So this Rapids team appears to be playing tonight like they've got nothing to lose. Well, it's a preseason game for both teams. You know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it goes against your record, but it doesn't count in your conference, so. And Halber, boy, I don't know, it's gonna be spot. close. The official running in from the far side. Where he is, boy, looks like short. Does not look like they're just gonna give it to him. Well, I don't That's know That's gonna be really close. Boy. We'll have to bring the chains out here. I don't know, Chris, I'm not gonna call this one. It's too early in the season to be wrong. So far, you've been on the money tonight, Joel. <laughs> May be the first game of the year, but you're in you're in midseason <laughs> form. Oh, well, whichever way it goes, it's gonna be within the length of the football. Oh, he's got it. Yep, he had to get it so over the 30. First down it. for the Rapids. All right, well we'll line it up and do it all over again.
Man in motion, and they will run the option around the left oh, side. No. And uh -oh. Albert's got some room. He's going to get chased down by Schmirschna, but not until he gets. Well, we do have a flag on the play. We may have a block in the back. This one's coming back. So Albert takes it inside the Hudson 40, but a little hanky on the field, and that one's going to go back. When I saw that number 70 put his hands on his helmet, like, oh, no, not me. I think he's the one they're going to catch for it. Yeah, usually when you put your hands up saying it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> that looks number 70. <laughs> they're going to throw it at you. <laughs> number 70 is Hayden Beagle. I wonder if he's related to the linebacker. Ooh, personal foul. So we've got a personal foul. It may have been a, a chop block or something out there. But no, I don't understand this. From where he, if that's where he threw the flag, why wouldn't they have marked the penalty off from there? Is, is it it's from the end of the run they marked it back? That's the way it's looking. So they're going to get a first down out of it. Boy, that's curious but, uh, to me. They'll back it Not up a 15. Spot, must, must have been after the play was over. So it couldn't have been a chop block. Who knows what that was? Somebody getting a little chippy in there. And it looked there like they had go. a screen going. It just looked like uh, if they were trying to set up a middle screen or something, but they that offensive line just looked like they let the Raider defensive line come right through. Yeah, it looked like a screen. It must have been blown up on the other side, and Berkey capitalizes on it. And, takes down the quarterback that's one, of the, that's one of the plays that watching the the Raiders scrimmage they were a little susceptible to that center screen against Menominee but all in all the scrimmage was a good good test for the Raiders they got to see some good offense good defense oh fumble ball comes loose Raiders say the Raiders they, have, say it. they have, it. have it lots of officials on the field yes man. the Raiders have it there okay So the Raiders defense coming up with another turnover and the offense with another great opportunity inside Rapids territory here. I'd really like to see the offense get click here and, and take up a get a nice drive going here. Run six, eight plays, get it into the end zone, take up most of the clock. They'll go around the right side oh. with Brody Belland. And he's gonna have a short gain. You know, Brody Bellin did see a lot of carries last year, too. He was part of that rotation in their defense, or offensive backfield last year. First time we've called his name tonight, but uh, yeah, did see quite a bit of action last season. So Bellin and Malika on the wings, and Snyder as the tailback. They'll give it to Snyder, and Snyder. Oh, I think it was faked it to Snyder. Miller kept it. Even faked uh, the cameraman out. That happens once in a while. <laughs> so Luke Miller takes it around the right side. Gain of about six and a half. Well, you know this, Chris, they can open up their whole playbook because they're going to go for it on fourth down. You're not in a, a position where you can kick a field goal and you're not in a position where you're going to punt it. So third and a short four. Coming up for Hudson. Malika in motion, and they'll send him back. This time it's Snyder who moves over. Bellin moves, and they this will give it to Snyder, Snyder this time. And that's going to be close to a first down, but I'm guessing going to be a hair short. Well. Vince Beagle making the tackle for Rapids, and we're going to have a fourth down and two. Well, are we going to see the, the Hudson jumbo package that they've ran so many times in the past? does not look like it. Yeah, no substitutions for the Raiders here. I do see some uh, players putting their helmets on, but that looks like the defense getting see? ready in case this doesn't work. I'd rather be optimistic. I think they're going to get this. I think if they run to the outside with Tucker Malik, I think they'll get it. Bellin in motion. They'll give it to Bellin, and he's oh. swallowed up. <laughs> Loss of about eight yards there. 
So Rapids will take over at their own 42 or 43 yard line. Well, I think that was the best offensive play the Red Raiders have had all game. <laughs> and it was a defensive play. Gained them, I think they gained seven, eight yards there. They had that one sniffed out for sure. Yeah, I, it looks like he's even being held and it didn't help. Well, Coach Cowles is not happy on the sidelines. He's having some words with his offense. This time, Rapids will kick oh, it out nice. on the edge, and that one's going nowhere. Uh oh. Dan Kelly, Schmershna. That's one of the two Kelly brothers. And Mitch Beinlich in there for the tackle. So a loss of two for Rapids. Bring up second and 12. Well, we're going the right direction. Let's get some of those yards back. Quarterback this keeper. Time, Albert will keep it himself and maybe a gain of a yard. That'll bring up third and long. Well, it looks like Chris, he might've got back to the original line of scrimmage. Bring up third and 10. 7-10 remaining in the first half. Hudson leading this game 7 to nothing at Newton Field for the Hudson Raiders home opener. Hudson travels next week, Chris, to play Kenosha Bradford. Pr probably be the oh, best they're team. looking to throw. He's going to have some company. Gets it off and throws downfield. That's intercepted. intercepted. Miles yes. Lewis. Picks it off for the Raiders. That's another turnover forced by this Raider defense who's looking stout tonight. I think Coach Cowles and, and Coach Hatfield are expecting big things out of Miles Lewis. He's the other sophomore they brought up, one of only two sophomores. Both sophomores are seeing playing time in this game. You know, that's always been a kind of a pet peeve of mine is you bring these sophomores up and you don't play them. They don't get to play with their normal team and they don't get the game experience where it looks like this year he didn't bring up as many, but he's given them some time. And this time it'll be Miller by himself, and he picks up a good six or seven yards on first down. So it might be time for the Raider offense to turn up some intensity. They came out of the first play of the game, first play of, of their game anyway, and scored. And uh, since then it's kind of been uh, in and out here for the Raider offense. So. Looked like Luke, Luke Miller was a little upset at the end of that play. Look, his helmet kind of got ripped off and kind of gave the official a look, but it's back in there now. Chin strap back on. Miller will hand it off. No, nope, keep it himself again, and he's going to be close to a first down. I think he's got it. I'm going to give it to him, Chris. I'm going to give it to him. The official agrees. Must have heard me. I would listen to you. And I just would really like to see the Raiders get a prolonged driver. If nothing else, just to give their offense some confidence and give this offensive line, this young offensive line, some confidence. And Joe Kelly in motion. They will go with... Bellin up the middle, and Bellin picks up about three yards. We'll bring up second down and seven for the Raiders on their own 49-yard line. You know, that Vince Beagle, that's a name we've heard a lot of this year. We heard a lot of it last year. We heard a lot of it the year before. I believe he has plans to go to the University of Wisconsin at Madison. He's going to play for the Badgers. It's good to see keeping those hometown boys in the state. This time, Miller will kick it out to Malika. Malika makes a heck of a play. Oh, nice move! Saving that ball and real close to a first down again. That play had disaster written all over it. Malika makes a silk purse out of a sow's ear, gets a first down. 
just handling that ball was a heck of a play, but to make that move and get the first down. I think Luke Miller did a heck of a job just getting into a position where Malik could get a hand on it. He was all wrapped up. So first down for the Raiders, and they'll go Quick up the middle off. this time to Snyder. And Snyder's going to pick up about two on first down. Another guy we uh, used Ooh. to call his name quite a bit when we played this Rapids team was Devin Peterson. Ooh, we've got a Raider down. That appears to be Alex Hayes down on the field, junior offensive lineman. Devin Peterson, the senior H-back and linebacker for Rapids, serving a suspension tonight, so he won't be on the field for Rapids. J.K. is the younger brother of J.K. is, or did I say, did I say it was Alex Hayes, younger brother of J.K. is, graduated a couple years ago in that 2009 team that won the Big Rivers Conference. Hopefully it's nothing serious. A couple of names from that team. You got uh, uh, Seth Stanchik's younger brother yes. on the field on this team too. Well, that's good to see. Running it off. So he walks off under his own power in the Raiders. I think Tyler Smirchna is the only player back that actually played on that team two years ago. And Miller gives to Malika. Malika makes a move and picks up a couple more, but uh, going to be a gain of about three or four on that one. Boy, one of the Raiders there, a nice block on the edge there. He just didn't quite sustain it long enough. He had his guy... Going backwards, he's like, just let him slip off just a, just a little bit. So a third and six coming up for the Raiders here at the Rapids 38-yard line. Hudson leading seven to nothing. And Miller will kick it out on the option to Kelly, and Kelly is going to be Ooh. real close. I believe we'll see a fourth down attempt here. It's gonna be about fourth down and a half a yard coming up for the Raiders. Kelly made a nice dive there to pick up an extra yard or two on that play. Three well, minutes. Well, this, this is a situation where you just gotta buckle up your chin strap and plow forward and you gotta be able to get a couple inches. Three minutes left in the half. Hudson leading Wisconsin Rapids seven to nothing and looking for more here. Fourth down and very short. Looks like the Raiders trying to draw him off sides. Well, there Hudson takes a timeout. They'll call the timeout. The Rapids, they said, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. Or fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. They didn't fall for it that time. Shame on somebody. I'm just glad we didn't get rained on. It was looking pretty... Pretty rough out there for a while, but uh, looks like we're going to have a window here to get this one in without getting any rain on us. I don't want to jinx us now, but yeah, looking did, a lot better now to the west. Did look a little iffy earlier. Boy, they sure had some storms come through northern Wisconsin last night. Seems like we've had a lot of storms this year. Well, I see Jake or Alex Hayes, excuse me, back in there, so that's good to see. I think this uh, junior class is one that, that the coaches have had their eye on for a few years. I believe this is the one that the class, they didn't lose a game as seventh graders, they didn't lose a game as eighth graders, they didn't lose a game as freshmen. Certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of people in this community excited about the Hudson Raider football team this year. Looking for big things out of this team. And they will go around the outside with Malika. Malika looking for more than just a half yard. And he's going to have the first down and more. So the Raiders will pick up about five yards on fourth and short. 
you know, first I think that was, 10 for Hudson. That was a good call there. You know, it made it look like they were going to go inside, you know, fourth and short. Everybody expected them to just try to dive up the middle, try something short, pitch it outside to their speed guy. So first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Malik in motion this time. They'll fake the give. The ball's up for grabs. And it looks like Rapids has it. Oh, boy. Just when they had a little momentum going, you saw a decent drive. The ball popped loose and was up in the air there, up for grabs. And... That will put an end to the drive. So now the Raiders with 228 left in the half. Their job is to keep Wisconsin Rapids off the board here. Tailback Schneider's coming off. Looks like he's limping a little bit. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Maybe just a, nothing hurt more than his pride. And Rapids will go around the left side, picking up maybe a yard or two, Kurt, Kurt Halber on the quarterback keeper. Clock ticking at 2.07 left in this half. Boy, I don't know. They're, 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 Rapids had it looked like one of their offensive linemen go off without, without his shoe. It took him a long time to get a replacement in. So second and five from the 25. And this time Halber keeping himself, kick it out on the option play, and he's wrapped up. Lawrence Pruitt was not letting that one go anywhere. Well, looks like the Red Raiders are just going to be content to let this one run out. That was one of those things we saw to that team a couple years ago. They didn't miss tackles, and so far this Raider defense has been been all over the field, and they're not missing tackles tonight. I'll tell you one thing: I've been I've been pretty impressed with the play of the defense so far. You know, anytime you can hold an opponent like the Wisconsin Rapids to no points and a half, you're doing something right. This time, Halber looks to throw. He's under pressure, oh. gets loose, and he's going to be taken down by Tyler Schmirschna. That's going to be for no gain. That'll bring up fourth down, and he did make the tackle out of bounds because the clock is stopped. That could benefit the Raiders here, the Hudson Raiders here, because, no, oh, and then they're uh, – on comes a punting unit. Let's see if we can get a return here. You know, we saw flashes of brilliance from Tyler Schmertz two years ago where he ran a couple back. So Rapids set the punt. Kick is a straight line drive one. And Schmertz had some trouble picking it up. Oh, and he's going to be brought down at about the 35-yard line. That was a terrible call. You gotta be kidding me, he's gonna call a block in the back on that. And we do have a flag on the field. Boy, oh boy. Looks like he was clearly hit him from the side. Helmet was in the front. I'll have to look at that one on the replay. Can you play that back quick? Let's get the camera to play that back for us. Put it on the jumbotron. Next season, next season. <laughs> So, Chris, are we going to do a highlight package this year? Absolutely. We've already got some great plays tonight for it. Keep playing like this, we'll have, we'll have plenty of highlights. How would somebody find the information to get a highlight video? Well, if you're looking for a highlight video or any video, for that matter, from this season or last season, you can go to riverchannel.org. Or if you want to email, you just go to info at riverchannel.org. Or you can call 715-386-0115, and they will get you taken care of. Miller keeps it himself, and it's going to be a gain of about two yards on first down, but with 31 seconds left. Yeah, I would believe unless uh, Rapids takes a timeout here, I believe that's the last play of the first half. That's the 
clock, play clock with 20 seconds. Nope, I think that'll be the last play. So it looks like Hudson will head to the locker room here in just a moment, leading this game seven to nothing. The defense looking pretty tough out there. The offense, first play from scrimmage for them, they scored, and since then it's it's kind of been off and on for them tonight. Yeah, you know, that last drive, they had something, looked like they had finally had something going. We're getting some consistency, and then they shot themselves in the foot with the turnover. This year, so far this game, it hasn't been the penalties, it's been the turnovers. So it's August 19th, and we're playing high school football. The trees are still green. They'll be gold in another month and a half or so, but this is cool. This is uh, letting us know that at the, the best time of year is on its way here with, with fall approaching, and this is not the only game going on this week so far in the Big Rivers Conference. Eau Claire North already with the victory this season. They took on Lacrosse Central last night, and Eau Claire North shares a field with Memorial and with Eau Claire Regis. So when there's conflicts, that's why they played last night on a Thursday night. North 1916 winners over Lacrosse Central. Also tonight, Chippewa Falls at Holman. Lacrosse Logan uh, taking on Memorial. Menominee facing Toma, Rice Lake with Medford, River Falls taking on New Richmond and Superior at Merrill. These Eau Claire or these uh, Hudson Raiders, like you said earlier, will travel to Racine next week to take on Bradford. And then uh, we open the conference schedule at Eau Claire Memorial. At Eau Claire Memorial, two weeks from tonight. And then they travel to Ole Hogroot Field in beautiful Superior, Wisconsin. Take on the Spartans. So a couple road games to start your Raider conference schedule. We won't be back at home until September 16th against Chippewa Falls. One uh, quick score, Chris, from uh, earlier tonight. The, the Hudson JV team did play the Rapids JV team and won 28 to nothing. So we got to get a plug in for them. Nice job by the sophomore team. So we've got some more good stuff coming up with uh, a nice strong showing by the JV team. So we're at halftime right now, the Hudson Raiders leading this game seven to nothing. We'll be right back with the second half. The second half about ready to get started here from Newton Field in Hudson. And the Raiders leading seven nothing. And they will receive in the second half. That's the good uh, news, Chris. After that uh, disappointing end of the half, the offense can get the ball back right again and hopefully they can get back on track and finish what they started there at the end and just minus the turnover. Craig Arndt set to kick off for Rapids. Tyler Schmershner ready to receive. The kick is a long and straight one. Schmershna fields it at the 10, and he's got a seam. He's got an opening. There we go. Whoa. Here we go. He's, he's one gone. Man eight. He's going to score. There goes Tyler Schmershna into the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. No flags on the play. Thank you, Mr. Schmershna. Well, that's a way to start the second half. We won't give the offense a chance to have the ball. That's what we call efficient offense, Joel. <laughs> well, that big play, quick strike. We talked about it earlier in the first half. Tyler Smirch, we saw that from him two years ago. Didn't see quite as much of it last year. Be nice to see a couple of those this year. That was a perfect kick for one. A long, straight one. Not a lot of hang time. And uh, Schmirchna and the team takes advantage. But you know, it, uh, it bad almost snap there. A, a, has the kick team over pursue so once you get past that initial wave there's nobody there one guy to beat for Schmirchna and he took him out but uh, the Raiders on the conversion had a mishandled snap so they will not get the extra point and lead this one 13 to 0 early Boy, let, on in the second half let's hope that doesn't come back to haunt them you know, we talked about that in the past. Hudson's had such a stellar kicking game. They've been able to make some field goals. They really haven't had any problem making the extra points. And there you see an example where uh, just a, you know, a little bit of a mis mishandling of the ball between the center and the holder. And Yeah, we've got uh, new participants there on that side. Dennison uh, moving on, and uh, we've got a new kicker in there, a new holder. So... Uh, New guys working through it here, and that's why they play these non-conference games first in the schedule. You know, I've, I've said it before, and I'm, gonna say, I'm just I'm really impressed with they, both these teams, the lack of penalties. And that just shows, you know, the coach has done a good job getting them prepared, installing that discipline, getting the kids, you know, prepared for the game so they know what they're doing. So 
So the Raiders set to kick off with Sam Somerville. This one's a low one as well, a little deeper than the early ones. And fielded by Campbell all the way up to the 35 yard line. That was a nice return. Well, here we are at the Raider defense back out there again. Fully rested. Let's have a quick three and out, get the offense back on the field, eat up some clock. So here we go, first and 10 for Rapids. Court Halber under center. And they will give it to the fullback who picks up about four or five yards on first down. I think that's the best first down play that the Wisconsin Rapids has had so far this game. Did a little homework there at halftime. They got some of their Blocking schemes changed up a little bit to try to take take advantage of that three-man Hudson front. And they'll uh oh get some room once again with Renke, and this time it'll be a first down. Flag coming in there late. That looks like it's going to be a personal foul against somebody. I'm not sure who it's going to be, but. Boy, that was a flag it was thrown from a long way across the field. It was a late hit out of bounds or what they're going to end up with I don't here. Know, but I don't know how that official could have thrown that, a late flag out of bounds. Oh, face, face mask. mask. That's going to go against the Raiders. Oh, no. So they'll tack on an extra five to that run, and now Rapids down to the 25-yard line of Hudson. This is by far the deepest they've had the ball tonight. Well, and the Wisconsin Rams has found something in that interior offensive line blocking-wise. They ran both those last plays right up the middle, and that last one was a... Now they go to the edge once again and tries to cut it back inside, and he does. Pick up a probably five or six yards before Schmersha makes the tackle. Very elusive, Zach Campbell. The 5'4", 135 pound bound halfback. Kind of gets lost amongst all those big offensive linemen. <clears throat> made a nice change of direction and made something out of nothing. Looked like it was gonna be stopped for little or no gain. The Raiders have patrolled that edge well and I'm sure that was an adjustment there because he was going to the edge then cut it back inside. So pick up a five on first down. And they'll go to Campbell once again, and this time there we he's go. pulled down right away. <laughs> Sam Rosica. <laughs> Tackle for loss. Brings down Campbell. Loss of four yards will bring up third down and nine for Rapids. Well, I don't think we have to say it, but the Rapids is definitely in four down territory here. I don't know what kind of a kicking game they have, but maybe about a 42 yard field goal from where the ball sits. And I don't think you're gonna see too many of those at this level. And this time, like Jonathan bots it, or Stephen Berkey, excuse me. Stephen Berkey all over that play. Another tackle for loss. Loss of six yards as Berkey wraps him up and brings him down. What do you dial up for fourth and 15? You're almost, you're going to have to go to the air, I would think. This will be a good spot for that screen. Let's not give him any tips. <laughs> And they'll look to pass. It's oh, nice. Deflected. Nice. Ethan Stanchik. If he can't get to the quarterback, you just stick those arms up there and knock it down. I thought that was 96, Jonathan Botsett, but that may be wrong. 
Somebody in the blue jersey. Somebody in the blue jersey play. knocked it down. So first and ten for Hudson. Now yeah, it's going to take a little time here, Chris. This being a new season, I'm not as familiar with these kids as I was in years past, and get all the numbers associated with the names. Malika in motion, blitz, and it'll be Miller taking it himself. He's going to pick up about two or three yards on first down. Call it three. That's an offense line did a nice job of picking up that blitz on that. Would have been nice if he could have gotten past that first level. He might have had a lot more room to go. Rapids brought the house on that play. And we haven't seen him throw so many, much of the way of passing since that earlier interception. And Miller will once again keep himself. This time he's going to lose a yard or two. So that'll bring up third down and long for Hudson. Well, I think you're going to have to throw the ball here, Hudson. Pretty good spot there for Hudson. Rapids has definitely made some uh, adjustments here over the halftime break. Let's see what the Raiders do on third and seven. Looks to be a passing down. They've got a passing formation in there, and they will run to the other side, Malika, and nothing doing for Malika. Punt team's going to have to hit the field for Hudson. I guess I don't understand that. I know you want to take up as much time off the clock and maybe try to catch them in something, but they just haven't had any success running the ball this half at all. Mix it up a little bit, maybe throw in a couple of passes. Oh, 6.50 left in the third quarter. Hudson Raiders leading this one over the Wisconsin Rapids leader, Raiders 13-0. Look at that Mike Monocle does both their. And oh, there's a flag. Again, barely gets it he, off. He never touched it. Oh. Wow. Well, the official said he got a piece of it. But as, as hard as he ran into the punter, the punter never moved. <laughs> Michael Longcar took a shot, but the officials say. Uh, he got a piece of that punt. Sure didn't look like he got a piece of by the way the, the ball flew there. But uh, anyway, the Raiders kind of lucked out because that punt went out of bounds. No return on it. And Wisconsin Rapids will take over at their own 32. Well, both teams are kind of trading punches here in the second half. Nobody's been able to land anything. Halbert. Up the middle to Ranky and so you got a Ranky for a yard or two. So Rapids in a second down and seven situation here. Campbell in motion. They'll fake it to Ranky. Kick oh. it back out to Campbell. Campbell's got some space, and he's brought down by Schmirschna at around the 40-yard line. It'll bring up third down. And it's like Tanner Owens kind of got tied up with the wide receiver out on this side and allowed the runner to get to the corner. Had good position. He's got a little tangle up there. So we got a short three here, third and a short three for Rapids. Maybe get a little tackle for a loss here and make that fourth and six or fourth and seven instead of this third and short. Oh, right up the we'll middle. With Derenke up the middle, and he'll have the first down up to about the 46-yard line. Fresh set of downs for Wisconsin Rapids. And Hudson will make that substitution on the defensive line. Matt Strakota back in there. Brian, it looks like they brought in Strakota, Berkey, and bots it. And they will keep it with Halber around the right side. He's got some room before he's brought down. 
You know, and that was a play they stopped so effectively in the first half. They weren't allowing that quarterback to get outside. They were stopping him at the line of scrimmage or even for a loss. So second in a long five this time for Rapids. And they'll go to Fumble, Ricky. Fumble, the ball's, ball's on the ground. Loose. A couple of Raiders say they have it. Hudson ball. And wow. The stripes confirm it. That's Is that the fourth turnover for another Hudson? Another turnover. It's got to be four or five. It's a way to keep your defense fresh. Get them off the field right away. Make the, make the team turn the ball over. Now if we can get some offense generated here, let those guys sit down for a while. Yeah, you know, I know they got a lead and, they, and, and you wanna try to run the ball, but boy, it'd be nice to see them complete a couple passes here. And they'll go up the middle with Snyder, and Snyder with a short gain, maybe a yard or two. Boy, it looks like that Beagle, Vince Beagle's almost blitzing on almost every play. One thing you're seeing is Hudson's not playing with a tight end. They have not run one play this game with a tight end. A little tighter at the formation this time. They'll go to Malika on the left side. Malika's got four or five yards. That'll leave us with a third down and short coming up here. They marked him out of bounds actually at the 44 yard line. So a third and four coming up here. You know, it's always kind of been a head scratcher when they run those plays and they run them to the short side of the field. Don't have a lot of room if you're the speed guy. Well, I think one thing, hopefully Hudson will stay healthy this season. You know, they've had some injury problems in the past, and we've got a good group of kids, and if we can keep them all on the field, good things are going to happen. Miller resets the offense, and the Raiders will call timeout. That's the third time Hudson's tried that. Once it worked, twice they ended up calling timeouts. So a timeout here at midfield, maybe not a bad place to call a timeout. This could be a pretty big conversion here if they can get it. Uh, they will run quite a bit more clock with 3.46 left in the third quarter and well, put themselves in position to get a score here as they, well. If they can get a first down here, they can definitely run out the quarter. And then you're putting a, the pressure on the Rapids offense to score twice when they haven't been able to score once in three quarters. Right. So. This is a, a big third down, even though it kind of seems like it. Just kind of one of one of many. And then the question is, if you don't get it, do you go for a fourth down this, or do you try to pin them back, make them go for a longer field? And with the way the Hudson Raider defense has played tonight, that is a decision. Well, let's just get it here. Let's just get the first down here. Then we won't have to worry about those decisions. Make it easy on the coaches. So Hudson will come out with that tight formation once again. Malika in motion. They'll fake the pitch to him. Miller looking to throw, and Miller in deep trouble. Gets the pass off to Malika. Malika. Oh. Going to be short of the oh, first he went down. Out, looks like he went out of bounds right at the original line of scrimmage. That play, again, looked like it had disaster written all over it. Well, now you got a fourth down. Now it's decision time. I Personally, I would punt the ball. You got the clock stopped. Looks like they're oh, going. Man. No Silly substitutions, me. and Miller comes back onto the field. And, you know, Miller's had no time when he has dropped back to pass or roll out. He has, just has not had any time I'd to I'd like throw to the ball. see a straight drop back, though. When you turn your back to the line of scrimmage, <laughs> bad things can happen. Man in motion is Kelly. And Miller throws downfield for big chunks. Oh, he's got he got it. it! What a catch! Wow. What a play, Chris. 
Hopefully we got that one for the highlight. Hopefully our cameraman got that one for the highlight video. Uh, we, well, we always hope for those things. But one thing about these Raiders <laughs> running backs is they can all catch the ball out of the field. They all have got good hands, and Kelly showed it off there. Coming back for that ball and kind of turning himself around to get it. First down and 10 for Hudson. Oh, no. And they put it on the turf. <sighs> So something good happens and something bad happens. The Raiders will turn it over. So it's kind of like that punt, I guess. So now we're down at the 20 yard line here. Yeah, he would like to have gotten 10 more yards out of a punt, but oh well, you know, hey, could have been worse. So Rapids will take over. 3.15 left in the third quarter, trailing 13 to nothing. The Hudson Raiders with the lead here. And they will go to Rinky to the right side, and he's pushed backwards. That's going to be a short game. Yeah. I think Hudson basically has uh, all new linebackers out there this year, and they look to be doing a pretty stellar job. The experience comes along the defensive line and in the defensive backfield. This time they'll pitch it out to the motion man who barely scoops it up. That could have been a big play Boy. for the defense there if he doesn't get that, to it. That looked like an opportunity for Hudson to make a big play, but Ball it's all right, no gain. Ball took a bounce off the turf. They can hold him for little or no gain here, and I don't think Rabbit would have any choice but to punt it. So third and seven coming up for Rapids at their own 24-yard line. Just approaching the two-minute mark in the third quarter. And Holber looking there you go. and he's brought down. That's what we're talking about. A sack. That makes the decision real easy for the Rapids coach. Punt it away, live, live to play another day. Burgess with the TFL and Tony Biolo will have to send out the punt team here. Ball marked at their own 19 yard line. That Tyler Schmerschner will be standing at about half, at right about the midfield. Well, he's already taken one back for a touchdown. Seems to be our best offense so far. It's a high kick. Schmerschner makes one guy miss. And then he's pulled down at the 40-yard line. So the Raiders will take over on offense here. This will be their second possession on the field after returning the kickoff to open the second half for a touchdown. You know, i just like to see him run a, a series without turning the ball over. Don't You don't even have to score. Just let's, let's get, gain 30 yards. Run five, seven minutes off the clock. One minute left in the third quarter. Hudson leading 13 to zero. And they'll go with Snyder and Snyder's gonna lose a yard or two. Oops, sorry. Well, that's not what you want to see on first down. You'd like to get a few yards and make it second and a little bit shorter, but second and 11. Got Alex Herrick on the field as wide receiver. So again, they go up the middle. A little more room here. This oh, time no. It'll be Kelly. Completely fooled me on that play. And Kelly picks up about six yards on. Second and 11. Bring up third and five for the Raiders. Just on the other side of their own 45 yard line. This 
This time they'll go with Bellander on the left side. And Bellin's going to be short. Maybe a yard or two for him. Well, and Hudson's elected to punt the ball. Here's the sidelines calling punt team. And it's kind of been an adventure back there for the punt team tonight. Rapids has brought pressure every time and has come close each time they've done it. Well, either one of these teams, they're going to get a block or they're going to get a penalty that's going to give the Raiders a first down. Let's hope it's the latter. Raiders will bring everybody inside this time. Nobody on the edges here. And this time the kick is away. Fielded it at the 30 and around the edge to about the 42 yard line. So pretty decent field position coming up here for Wisconsin Rapids. Just 10 seconds left in the third quarter. If it's a run play, it's probably the last play of the, of the quarter. Yeah, I've been watching some of the line play of the Hudson offense, and uh, boy, that Brian Caffin, number 74, he's having a heck of a game. I've seen him have his defender on the on his back a couple times here. That's what we need. We need to get these juniors, get them in there, get them some experience, so you can have a, a good, solid two years of experienced offensive linemen. Well, they'll go to Ranky, and Ranky is going to have a first down. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, you got a score, Hudson 13, Wisconsin Rapids 0. Tyler one quarter left in this one, Joel. And Tyler Schmertzen is not the guy you want making tackles on your defense. Not that deep in the field, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, let's go, let's go Raider defense. This is uh, it's a big series here. The Raiders missing that extra point at the end of that, at the end of that uh, last touchdown. If they give up a score here, you could be in a pretty precarious position. Well, then you're one play away from you know potentially losing the game, but that's a long way to go. I, one thing I, I will think that I think that that linebacker core is missing, Josh Schuster. He played Schuller. last year. Schuler, yeah. excuse me. He was a transfer from I believe DC Everest. Uh, started last year. Uh, I don't know if, what, if it's a health issue or what it is, but he is not playing tonight. Be nice to get him back out there and anchoring that center of those linebackers. Just think, they're playing this well. They're pitching a shutout, and if they get him back. And this is a Rapids team last year that uh, put some points on the board. If I remember correctly, I think they finished. I think they finished in the top ten, ranking-wise, in in D1. They took a tough loss right at the end of the season. I think they went into that last last game of the season with that ranking, but I believe they took a tough loss to Marshfield last year at the end of the season. And this time, Halber looking to throw. He's got his man, and tackled by Schmirschna, but not until. After he gets inside the 10 yard line. And now that Raider defense will have themselves a test. Boy. Well, this is the first time the, the Raider defense had their backs to the wall. We've seen this many times in the past where when pressured, the Hudson defense has ra risen to the occasion, risen to the challenge. So Rapids looking to get into this ball game. They'll run it up the middle with Halber and he'll pick up maybe a yard or two and that'll bring up Second down and goal from about the eight yard line. Ethan Stanchik with the tackle for the Raiders. You know, once again, there's another example of the Hudson defensive coaching staff rotating those defensive linemen in, trying to keep them fresh. And they'll up go the middle up the middle again. This time, it's going to be a gain of about a yard or two. Take it down to about the five or six. But this is four down territory for Rapids. Two downs to get five yards. Raider defense 
looking for a stop, leading this game 13-0 early on in the fourth quarter. And they will go up the middle there. Ball's loose. Raiders have it. He may score. And it's He's good. got room. I don't think they're going to catch him. Around the corner. Loses steam. The ball comes loose, but it's out of bounds. Lawrence wow, it, takes Chris. it all the way down to the around the 20 yard line. And he got that ball knocked out of his hand. That could have been disastrous after a huge play. I think the coach left something to say about that and tomorrow when they're watching the highlight film, watching the game films. But a huge stop but for the Raiders. I just was thinking it. Wouldn't this be a perfect time for another turnover? I didn't want to jinx it. The Hudson defense comes up with another turnover. That's got to be five or six, Chris. Takes the points off the board for Rapids and puts the Hudson Raiders in a position to put some points on the board. They're gonna mark it around the 22 yard line for Miller and company. Malika and Belland in there, Malika in motion. They'll give it to him. On the left oh, side. Oh, nice seam. He's got some room and makes some more happen with it. Inside the 25 yard line, inside the 15. Pick up about seven or eight yards on first down. Let's see real some nice more of that tonight. Real nice job by one of the offensive linemen getting out there and sealing that edge so he get those yards. So the Raiders with a second and short. On the 15 yard line at Wisconsin Rapids. Malika in motion once again. They give it to him once again. And he's got some more room. That's going to be Boy. a first down for the Raiders. That, that looks like you're going to have a first and goal right on the 10. First and goal is always good, but it's better to have first and 10 at the 5. Or first and 10 at the 11, because then you can still get that other first down. So the Raiders with a first and goal. All you have to do. Just inside the 10 yard line here. Just hang on to the ball, Hudson. That's all you need to do. And Malik in motion. They'll fake it this time. There he's Throw got him. He's got him. Oh, that's Alex Herring with his first touchdown of the season. Touchdown, Raiders. And that'll make it 19 to 0, Hudson. And there's your dagger. Nice job by the sophomore. So Sam Somerville in here to make it a 20 point lead. I got for the Raiders with 940 left in the game. And that one is blocked as well. So it'll be 19 to nothing. And I've got a feeling we'll be working on some punts and some Extra points in practice this week. I did get a chance to watch Alex Herring play as an eighth grader, and I remember watching this kid who was a foot and a half taller than everybody else in the field run across the middle and catch everything that was thrown at him and thinking, I can't wait to get to see him on Friday nights. And it looks like we're going to get to see a lot of him over the next three years. As a sophomore, uh, hopefully we'll see him for, for three seasons. Yes. I know he does, uh, he does play basketball. Very good basketball player also. That's the thing with a lot of these kids. I know the Hudson coaching staff really encourages these kids to play other sports. You know, he, he, yeah, they've got the weight room and they've got their Raider Elite program. They've got the things for these kids to get up in the weight room and, and condition, but he really does encourage them to get out and play other sports. Yeah, one good thing about that is obviously you've got the, the athletic end of it and work on footwork and all these other sports. Another good thing about being in all these sports is you've always got somebody on top of you academically too. You, you've got to stay eligible. And if you're playing sports all year long, you oh. got to stay eligible all year long. Exactly. So. Not only the coaching staffs, but also your teammates. Nothing wrong with playing several sports. You know, and the one thing with you're playing other sports, you're using other muscle groups, and it's just it's uh, it's 
very rarely do you see three sport athletes anymore. And I just, I think that kids are really missing out. So Somerville to kick off, Hudson leading 19 to zero. It will be fielded at the 18 yard line by Marriott. And Marriott wrapped up and pulled down at around the 29 yard line. Stewart Burns and Tucker Malika in there on the tackle for Hudson. I was trying to think of that Packer announcer that used that line. Is that Wayne Larravee? Wayne Larravee. your dagger. <laughs> With 9.30, I'm still not ready to call it a dagger. But oh, it is. we got to feel over. pretty good. we got to feel pretty good. 9.30 left in the game. This time it will be Ranky up the middle. And you know, these are one of those games that coaches really love. There's enough good things to feel good about. You end up winning the game, but there's enough things that you can work on in practice so you don't get too high on yourself. Pick up a four on first down for Ranky. And Halbert back under center here for Wisconsin Rapids. And they'll go with Ranky once again. And maybe a yard or two on that one. And I think Hudson will be more than happy to let them just run the ball. I just I don't understand why Wisconsin Rapids is not trying to throw the ball a little bit, trying to make something happen. You get you got to have three scores. I just don't think they're a, they're a passing team, Joel. We didn't see much passing on them in the last two years, really. They, I just don't know if they're capable of it. So third and four, and this time. Halbert will keep it himself, and he's going to have the first down. But like Joel said, that clock is ticking. 8.30 and ticking left in this game with Hudson leading 19-0. Alex Burgess comes off the field for Hudson. Alex Burgess, the son of Andy Burgess, one of the – Coaches for Hudson. Coaches at the, I believe he coaches at the freshman level. And Halber ends up keeping himself, but that looked like some sort of miscommunication. He turned and looked like he was expecting someone to take the ball who didn't. There wasn't a lot of good happening on that play for the Red Raiders. So second and 10 coming up for Wisconsin Rapids. Kind of a sparse crowd here for the home opener, but it is Pepper Fest this weekend. I'm sure Pepper a lot of you Fest people and the that kids are aren't, aren't in school yet. So no, you got some vacations still. I'm sure people are on vacations. They'll kick it out the outside and <laughs> pull down out there. By bots it, and we've called his name several times tonight. He's had himself a big night. John bots it, a neighbor of mine, grew up right down the street. Watched him and his brothers play booster football up through the ranks. Having himself, he's found himself a real home there at defensive end. It's nice to see these kids that have you know waited in the wings and that you know they've gotten a little playing time as a junior and and now they're a senior to really see him excel. So third and six or third and sixteen. Coming up for Rapids. And Halber's going to look to throw, and he's crushed. <laughs> and how many times do we see that out of his brother? Ethan Stanchik, the brother of Seth Stanchik, who made a lot of sacks in his day a couple years back. So Biolo will send out the punt team here on fourth down, officially waving the white flag. And Gaska kicks it away. Good Schmershna picks it up, and he's got some space. Oh! <laughs> Turns on the Jets before he's brought down at about the 25-yard line. Matt Stracota put a hit on one of the Red Raider 
players. I don't know if, if our cameraman got that on tape or not, but boy, that'll make the highlight reel. Bots it coming off a, the field gingerly, though. That was a decleater. Oh, no. Yeah, we, definitely, we just got through talking about him. Dale will probably tell me to quit talking about him. So the Raiders will take over on the 29-yard line in Wisconsin Rapids with six minutes left, and they'll bring in Gallardi to play quarterback here. Kick it out to Malika. Malika looking to make a move and slips. So with Biolo punting there in that fourth down, it looks like uh, Coach Cowell is going to bring Luke Miller out and going to get some work here for John Gallardi. Well, you know, there's no sense in, getting, in taking a chance on getting your quarterback hurt. The game is uh, I, in the bag here. Give some kids some playing time. See what you've got. Um, I think they're going to be content just to keep the ball between the sidelines, let the clock run. If you turn over on downs, you turn over on downs with a couple minutes left and a uh, 19-point lead. Malik in motion. They'll give it to Snyder. Snyder oh. finds an opening, and he's inside the 10-yard line. So it'll be set, setting up here a first and goal once again for the Raiders with 518 left to play in the game. Malika and Bellin coming off the field. Looks like Kellen Pearson. Raiders making some substitutions here, getting some of those other guys in the game. Getting some guys some work here. That's good to see. You like to see these you know, younger kids get some playing time. You never know how much they're going to get during the season. And that play is blown up. Probably a loss of... A yard or two there. Oh, looks like loss of four, maybe. Let's see where they and mark just it. Just keep that clock ticking. Just tick, tick, tick. Down under four and a half minutes coming up here. The second and goal from the 11. 425 and ticking. Left in the game. Raiders leading at 19 0. They're going to run three more plays, take off another minute and a half or so off the clock. Gallardi letting the clock run all the way down. Oh, he just didn't get it off. Oh, was that an offside or a delay of game? Looked like movement to me. Oh, that's what it was. The whole right side of the line moved before the ball was snapped. Oh, was that a case where the, where the center didn't know the Something snap? happened. It could be. <laughs> because was one guy wrong or were they all wrong? There were several guys that <laughs> stood up there. But that just moves some more clock uh, for the Raiders. Yep, that gives them another 30 seconds, 35 seconds. Tick, tick, tick. Take your time here, fellas. Yep. Second goal from the fourth, from the 15. And Gallardi will pitch it out. And that's going to be maybe another loss of a yard or two. That stops the clock, though. Let's get a bit. And Andrew Dixon ends up going out of bounds there. And like you say, stops the clock. That's your enemy. Yeah, Keep I think it in they'll, they'll wind it here, though, I believe. Hmm. So Hudson will get two more plays, get it down under three minutes. See, we got some new offensive linemen out there. You never know when those kids are going to have to play. And muffed the snap. Lose another yard or two, but uh, good news is he lost it inbounds. So yes. keep the <laughs> clock ticking. The clock is ticking. It'll go under three minutes here before the Raiders come out here for a fourth down and about 20 to go to the goal. Well, Chris, I got to say one thing I'm surprised about. That, I believe, right there was only one, the second of two penalties for Hudson. They had the personal foul on the sideline, false start. They also had a pass interference. Oh, that's right, yeah. Too. All in all, three three penalties. One, if you can if you can hold your team to one penalty per quarter. Gallardi taking it himself, ran some clock. 
lost five or six, and Rapids will come back onto the field with 2.56 left in the game. And I think that was a uh, situation where the Red Raider defense, a defense was just teeing off on the Raiders' second offense. And they knew it was <laughs> – they knew the Hudson clock. wasn't going to put a lot of effort into scoring there too. So. Yeah, they're just trying to run the clock down. So well, Rapids will look have to, to throw it here. take the goose egg off the board here. And that's not going to do it anytime quick. The Hudson like the still has their, their, eight, their first string defense in there. Strakota's still in there. Does look like they got some different linebackers. Some, see Smirchna still Smirchna, in there. Smirchna, Pruitt's still out there. out there. Owens is still out there. Looking to keep that. Keep that shutout intact. I know that's always been important to the players. And they'll run it over to the left side. And that keeps it inbounds. That should take it down under two minutes. Owens with the tackle. Oh, now and we're seeing some new players come in. There's short gain of about a yard as Matt Stracota comes, comes off out. the field. Number 90, big Matt Stracota. I still remember that interception he had last year down at Menominee. <laughs> what a play <laughs> that was. Laid out horizontal for that <laughs> one. <laughs> that one might have made that highlight set. Yes, I think it did. <laughs> So third and nine coming up for Wisconsin Rapids. This time Albert oh, looking to throw, it looking for it all. And no, that's oh, gonna be they're incomplete. gonna give him a catch. Boy, wow. I thought he was out of bounds. I thought he caught out of bounds. Wow. You know, a little little hand checking, a little hand fighting going on there, but looked very out of bounds to me. <laughs> One thing it's hard to tell because they do have the hashes over there, and I have mistaken that for being out of bounds when their actually was on the hash lines, but I still Tyler Schmerchner comes out. So 132 left in this game. Rapids looking to get on the board. Hudson leading this game 19 to zero. And Halber will keep it himself. Short game. Mitch Beinlich comes from a long line of Beinlich boys who played football for the Raiders. Clock ticking. And they'll kick it out the outside to Campbell. And Campbell's going to pick up about six yards and got himself out of bounds as well. Out of bounds with just under a minute to go. So third down and four here for Rapids. Rapids still has their full complement of timeouts, although I don't think they'll uh, use them unless it's a situation where they think they can, just for pride's sake, put a score up on the board. Now they're looking to throw. And <laughs> incomplete. Wow, I think that was a case where he started running before he had the ball in his hands. No, pass was but right in the bread basket. I don't know if Lewis got a hand in there. Or Goska playing a little wide receiver. Seeing there at DB, he was their option yeah. quarterback last season. Well, the way their offense is played tonight, they may put him back there. He's a lot bigger guy than uh, Halbert, that's for sure. <coughs> Halbert looking to throw again. That one's overthrown. And that, oh, Hudson, and that, now you'll see the victory formation. So the Raiders. They're going to open their season with a victory. And last year they had that tough road trip to open their season at Rapids. Took a, I think it was a 35-7 loss. This year we'll open the season a little happier, a little more sharp looking. Like you say, they've got a few things to work on, but they certainly got to feel good about themselves and the way they played tonight. Yes, and the team will get to do that all-important ritual. They'll get to sing the Hudson Fight song in front of the home crowd. Oh, Hudson's not lined. They're lining up. They're going to run a play. And they'll. Gillardi gives it to Snyder up the middle. 
38 seconds left in the game. Do they even need to run a play? I don't think so. I don't think so. He hasn't wound it yet, so. Uh, yep, that's it. Now he's going to run it. Oh, boy, did he wait a long time for winding that clock. I think he wants to go home, too. Uh, yeah, I think he's ready to go home. Really no point in running the play. So no. Sometimes the officials have to kind of do things like that. You know, and why, why take a chance and yep. get somebody hurt? Yeah, it's, it's a chance to see your players, but you know what? You've gotten a lot of chance to see them. And so that's going to be it, folks. Handshakes all around. The Hudson Raiders open the 2011 season with a 19-0 victory against Wisconsin Rapids. And next week, we hit the road for Kenosha Bradford. And the, the great thing about our coverage is there's going to be a lot of people that just are not going to be able to make that trip next week. Uh, it's about a six-hour drive down to Kenosha. But the River Channel will be making that trip, and we will be broadcasting that game. So if you don't get a chance to watch it, tune in. Next week we'll have the game. But uh, the Raiders tonight, 19-0 victors over Wisconsin Rapids. And, Joel, do you have any final thoughts? You know, I'm just, I, I was real impressed with the way they played tonight. Yeah, they're the turnovers, and that's a, a problem. But you know what? That's correctable things. Uh, the lack of penalties, I was real impressed with that. All in all, I... Uh, uh, they played much better than I would have thought they would have played the first game of the season. I know the coaching staff has high expectations, high hopes for this team, and so far they're living up to it. It's a quality win against a quality opponent, and the Raiders will face another quality opponent next week. So we'll see you next week from Kenosha. For Joel Eby, I'm Chris Larson. Thanks for watching.